Well, thank you very much, everybody. We have a great group of business leaders, tremendous leaders throughout the country and even beyond. And we also have a tremendously talented and a good person, Senator, a friend of mine for a long time, Tim Scott. And we're talking today about opportunity zones, uh, putting people to work and getting businesses started and creating a lot of good things. And our tax plan, which has done so much, the tax cuts, I call it, but it really is its tax cuts and reform, uh, it really creates some really big advantages for these opportunity zones. So I will ask Senator Scott to say a few words, and then I might ask a few of the folks gathered around to say something. And uh, I know you're not concerned with the press because you're very good with the press, <laughs> Tim. So thank, you. Far, thank you very much. Absolutely. Again. Thank you. Mr. President, as you will uh, recall, hopefully, uh, we spoke late last summer right. about legislation that I thought would be very helpful to distressed communities. As you recall, I grew up in a single parent household, came from one of the distressed communities, and we sat in these very chairs and had a discussion about opportunity zones and what it could mean for the future of this country. And within a couple of days, when you were on Air, For Air Force One, you were talking positively about this legislation, in part because of your serious support of this legislation. I was able to get it included in the tax reform package, and now we are sitting on opportunity. I think it's a gold mine, uh, a gold mine for so many kids in so many communities that thus far have not had the access to opportunities. You're breathing in new hope into distressed communities around this country, and I want to say thank you for doing thank that. You too. And we have leaders sitting around here, some investors, some mayors, who all understand and appreciate the magnitude of opportunity that the Investing in Opportunity Act presents. And we think we're very thankful for folks like the EIG group from the outside initially brought the idea to us and we had a great conversation. And now we're looking at ways through the guidance provided by the Treasury to start seeing these opportunity zones right. manifesting in every single state in this country. Well, it's going to be a great chance, and it really is the best word is opportunity. It will be a great opportunity. Yes. Maybe we could go around the room a little bit. You could say a little bit about the great job you've done. You have done a great job. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. And on behalf of the city of Norfolk, I want to thank you for coming to a commission that you're all for. Right. And my governor, Ralph Northam, who you had here on Monday, That's sends right. his best wishes. Um, this is a great opportunity. We're here to learn more about this opportunity uh, for the city of Norfolk. Uh, we have the largest naval base in the world. And uh, there is a community uh, uh, there, a uh, segment of our community that is high poverty and it's the St. Paul's Quadrant, three public housing communities, about 1,700 units, 4,500 people uh, right next to downtown. And we're looking forward to this opportunity fund being a tool uh, to help us address uh, as we transform that community into an opportunity for all of our citizens and for the region. That's great. Say hello to the governor. I'll tell him. Thank hello. you very much. Yes, Mr. President, thank you. thank you for having me here. Um, I represent uh, community banks. Uh, minority community banks and also uh, national community banks. So what we would like clarification on um, and hope that you will help assist more of the guidelines in including uh, community banks that serve not only urban communities but also rural communities right. to allow them to uh, be approved to receive capital investments. And in doing that, you're already leveraging a platform that has been in existence that has have been providing mortgages, consumer loans, and business loans right. for decades. And so if the Opportunity Zone Fund can you know, uh, uh, support this initiative for community banks, it would be a tremendous victory for Very us. Very good. And we're looking at that, as you know. Great. Steve Case. First of all, thank you for including the Opportunity Zones in the legislation. Senator Scott's leadership with uh, Senator Booker, it was nice to see bipartisan support for this provision. And it's critically important, as we were talking earlier in our, in our meeting, last year, 75% of venture capital in the United States went to three states, California, New York, and Massachusetts, 75%. The other you know, 47 states fight over the other 25%. And since startups are the major job creators, if we're only back in startups in Silicon Valley or in New York and Boston, not in you know, Des Moines or Detroit or, or Charleston or, or other parts of the country, we shouldn't be surprised that a lot of people feel kind of left out and left behind. So we have to level the playing field so everybody everywhere really feels like they have a shot at the American dream. And we can only do that if we make sure, you know, capital flows everywhere. And this provision, you know, you know, the Treasury Department's already taken the first steps when there's Secretary Mnuchin's leadership. And hopefully in the next few weeks, the rules will be clarified in a way that will help not just on the real estate side, but also on the startup side. And we can create back more startups and more places that create more jobs in more places and give more people in more parts of the country a reason to wake up in the morning and be hopeful 
about the future as opposed to anxious about the future. So it's a, it's a very important provision. Hopefully everybody in the administration will make a priority out of making sure that it's put in place quickly uh, and the rules are written in a way that's very supportive of this next generation of startups all across the country. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Walter, Walter Davis, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm a retired banker and now investor. Uh, that's right next to being an attorney. Um, and so for us, I'm, I'm really excited because what this does is give us an opportunity to unleash capital in communities that have been left out. Um, the flow of capital is a mother's milk of any great economy. And so when you don't have it in certain communities, you don't have the opportunities for economic mobility and for people to thrive. And so what this does is give a non-traditional way of capital to flow to these communities so that the people on the ground are truly impacted. So thank you for your support for this, you and Senator Scott. We really thank appreciate you. it. Great job you've done too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gary? Sure. Gary Hobbs. Um, own a small business in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, we focus on urban. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good man. He is a great man. Uh, but uh, yeah, we do a lot of urban development and construction, uh, leveraging a lot of the great tools that we have already, new market tax credits, low income housing tax credits, and CDBG funds, home funds, and so forth. And we see this uh, tool here as just another uh, option here for us to do good things in our community, uh, such as creating also, uh, path, uh, uh, pathways to self-sufficiency for single parents. Um, and uh, we do a lot of work that with permanent supportive uh, individuals that are homeless, and we see this as a great opportunity to expand uh, those offerings here through, uh, not only throughout Indiana, but throughout the country. So grateful for this um, new tool and new law, and uh, excited about leveraging it, and I'm sure many other folks in our business sector uh, see uh, an opportunity to leverage um, the, this well, tool as well. Beautiful, and keep up the good work. Thank it's you. very important work. Our Secretary of the Treasury, Steve. Well, we're thrilled that this was included in the tax plan. Very, very important part of our economic development goal. And uh, we're busy working at the IRS. We just sent out a letter to all the governors to make sure that we understand in the states where they want to put the money to work. And we're excited to get this going. So big impact on all these areas and, and the economy. Thank you, Stephen, for your hard work. I mean, you have been, Thank you, Senator. The Treasury has responded very quickly with guidance to the governors, which is key to seeing this actually manifest in, in communities throughout this country. Jesse? Jesse Knight, I'm a, a former um, energy executive and now philanthropist and dedicated to, to giving back to this great country, what this, uh, my wife and I have been able to achieve. And I want to thank you for your leadership and Senator Scott, your leadership, because this is an opportunity for the first time that I think the government is allowing the private sector to take a lead to try to build a foundation of wealth for a community that heretofore has not been able to participate. Uh, and I'm very excited about being a part of this. And there are a number of conservative business, African American and other minority executives who are making a contribution to make this come real so we can get the lift for the, our country. Great job. Thank you very much. Jim Swanson, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an investor, but most recently an impact investor. We invest in uh, businesses that we think help to benefit society, and we see this as a tremendous uh, you know, new policy that is really unknown in the Tax Reform Act. Not many people knew about this, but it has tremendous benefits to 50 million people that live in these distressed areas. And it does this by providing them with economic opportunity to be able to help themselves through access to capital that will help create new startups that create jobs. And uh, we think this is a tremendous opportunity to, to build on. We look forward to, to this really being a great thing in the country. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Mayor. Mr. President, Aaron Stewart, Mayor of Newburgh in Connecticut, the youngest female Republican mayor in the country. Oh, that's very impressive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's very good. Uh, I represent a community of about 77,000 people, very, right. very high poverty community. We get lost when it comes between Boston and New York. And as you can imagine, there's not much moving into Connecticut these days. Uh, so this is an opportunity, and we keep using the word opportunity, and it's so fitting. Um, this is an opportunity to transform a community like mine. That is still, the poverty rate is high enough, but we're small enough that even a, an investment, um, even of a couple million dollars, would have the ability to transform lives and direct lives, and we're really grateful. Thank you. How did you feel when Connecticut lost General Electric? 
That was not a good day. No. That's not supposed to happen. And only the first of, of many. Well, if you were governor, to. that would not have happened, right? <laughs> I think that would not have happened. It would not have, sir. <laughs> You've done a great job. Thank you. Uh, Tim, anything further to say? I just think uh, the uh, important key points uh, is to realize that Treasury is working very hard on getting the guidance out. We have investors in the room who are very interested and engaged in the process. But one of the things that would be very helpful for us is written comments as it relates to how can we steer the guidance in the right direction so as to benefit the communities that we've served. I think Steve did a really good job talking about venture capital, where it goes today, and what it would take for it to go someplace different tomorrow. I would love to see more opportunities, access to capital in South Carolina starting on day one. And uh, there have been some great ideas that I'm sure Ivanka and others will have an opportunity to discuss with you at a later time. Ivanka, would you like to say something? You've been pushing this very hard. Yeah, no, I've been, um, I've been tremendously pleased to be able to have such a robust discussion with so many in this room um, today and, and prior to today. And Senator Scott, your leadership on this has been incredible. So creating the incentive to bring capital into communities that are currently being overlooked is just a tremendous opportunity. And, and the fact that this was integrated into the tax bill, which is already um, proving to be so beneficial um, for, for um, people all over this country is just another element as we start to, to rebuild those distressed communities of which 60 or 53 million Americans live in them today. So, so this will target those areas and uh, create a lot of investment opportunities. So thank you all for your comments and your feedback. And Senator, thank you for your leadership. I will say the success that we had on, over the child tax credit, if that is an example of what's possible, uh, good things are coming our way. Thank you all very much. You Thank you. Why have you not spoken out against domestic violence? violence. The House Oversight Do Committee. Do you believe the women are being violated? Opposed to domestic violence. And everybody here knows that. I am totally opposed to domestic violence of any kind. Everyone knows that. And it almost wouldn't even have to be said. So now you hear it. But you all know it. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President, for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.